In this video, we're going to be looking at how to find a rule for a straight line given two points. If you have got two points, there's only one straight line that's going to pass through both of them. And we want to come up with a rule like y equals 2x plus 3 for that straight line. So to start off with, let's recall a few basics about straight lines. The general form of a straight line is y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. The important part of this is the gradient for what we're going to do today. Recall the gradient of a straight line is rise divided by run. It can be positive, negative, zero, or sometimes it's undefined. So let's see how this strategy works with an example. Before we come to the case where we've got two points and we want to find a line, let's say we've already been told the gradient of the line and we just want to make it go through a point. The example we'll consider is if we have a gradient of 7 and we want the line to pass through 2,8. Well, let's have a look at a little picture of what we're really trying to do here. We've been given the point 2,8 and we want to have a line of gradient 7. So let's put a line that has a gradient of 7 down and what we can do is we can change that line by moving it up or potentially down until it passes through that point. So we want to look something like, this is our final answer. So let's now try and do that using some algebra. We know the general form of the line is going to be y equals 7x plus some number c. And we know that it passes through 2,8. In other words, when x equals 2, y has to equal 8. So let's substitute that point into our equation. 8 equals 7 times 2 plus c. But that means that 8 equals 14 plus c. And taking away 14 from both sides, negative 6 equals c, which means the rule is y equals 7x minus 6. Let's now try and find the rule for a straight line passing through two points. So we'll try and find the rule for a line that passes through negative 3 comma negative 2 and 1 comma 6. So we've got the point negative 3 comma negative 2 and the point 1 comma 6. And we would like to draw a straight line between those two points. And we can calculate the gradient of that straight line. For the rise, we've gone from negative 2 up to 6. So that's a rise of 8. And for the run, we've gone from negative 3 across to 1. So that's a run of 4. We always go left to right when we're calculating rise and run. So we've got rise of 8, run of 4, which is a gradient of 2. Now if the gradient is 2, that means our rule must be y equals 2x plus some number. And we're going to call that number c. Now, we know it has to pass through negative 3 comma negative 2 and 1 comma 6. We can actually choose either of these points and substitute it into the rule. So let's just choose the second one, because it looks like it might be a bit easier with a positive x and a positive y of 1 and 6. So substituting them in, we get 6 equals 2 times 1 plus c. Well, that tells us 6 equals 2 plus c, so taking away 2, 4 equals c. So the rule is y equals 2x plus 4. Let's check our answer of y equals 2x plus 4. It needs to pass through negative 3 comma negative 2 and 1 comma 6. If we substitute in x equals minus 3 and y equals minus 2, we get the equation negative 2 equals 2 times negative 3 plus 4. And simplifying that becomes negative 2 equals negative 6 plus 4, which is true, which means that the point negative 3, negative 2 is on this line. Substituting in x equals 1 and y equals 6, we get the equation 6 equals 2 times 1 plus 4. But that's the same as 6 equals 2 plus 4, which is a true equation. Therefore, both points are on the line y equals 2x plus 4, which means we have the right answer. For the third example, let's try and find the equation of a line passing through 2 comma 4 and 5 comma negative 5. So let's have a look at this in a diagram, 2 comma 4 and 5 comma negative 5. And we want to find the equation of a straight line through them. So let's draw that straight line and just see what it looks like. Again, we're going to calculate the gradient. Once again, we're going from left to right. So for the rise, we've gone from 4 down to negative 5. So that's a rise of negative 9. The run is going from 2 to 5, so that's a run of 3. So the gradient is going to be negative 9 divided by 3. 
which is equal to negative 3. Notice that although I've used some extra software to draw that graph there, usually if you're doing this with pen and paper, you're best off just drawing a little diagram so you get it right. So your diagram might look like this. Hopefully it looks a little bit better than that, but actually you just need some sort of picture so you can see it's got a negative gradient and so you can calculate the rise and the run. Well, once we've got the gradient, we know the rule is going to be y equals negative 3x plus some number. I'll call that number c again. And we can substitute in either point. Let's choose the point 2 comma 4. So when x equals 2, y equals 4, giving us the equation 4 equals negative 3 times 2 plus c, which means 4 is equal to negative 6 plus c. And adding 6 to both sides, we get 10 equals c. So the rule is y equals negative 3x plus 10. Or probably a better way to write that is y equals 10 minus 3x. Let's check our answer here. We should substitute in both points again to see if both of them make the equation true. So firstly, 2 comma 4. Substituting in x equals 2 and y equals 4, we get the equation 4 equals 10 minus 3 times 2. But that becomes 4 equals 10 minus 6, and that is a true equation. So 2 comma 4 is on the line. Substituting in x equals 5 and y equals minus 5, we get minus 5 equals 10 minus 3 times 5, and 10 minus 3 times 5 becomes 10 minus 15. And minus 5 is equal to 10 minus 15, which means the point 5, negative 5 is also on that line y equals 10 minus 3x. In conclusion, let's think about the steps we took. We were looking at the case where we were either given two points or given a gradient and one point. If we were given a gradient and one point, we wrote y equals mx plus c, where m was that gradient that we were given. Then we substituted in that point into the equation y equals mx plus c. We found c by solving the equation, and then finally we wrote out our rule. Then we considered what happens if we were given two points. Well, the first thing we did was find the gradient of a line between those two points. And the best way of doing that is to draw a diagram first. Then we found the gradient by using rise over run. And then we were in the situation where we have a gradient and one point. So then we can just follow the normal procedure once we've got the gradient and one point. And we just chose either of those points when we substituted.